Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and we have officially been breeding the goats for one week now. Now people always ask how they can tell if their dough has been bred and there's some things that you're going to want to look for. You're going to want to look for a standing heat in a dough um, that needs to be done or muck butt. So we'll go over that with you guys as well as who's been bred. Hello goat lovers, this is Crystal with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. What started with four chickens and two goats quickly grew into a lifestyle. So we moved, got more land, and of course, more goats. Follow our adventures as we grow our herd, our food, and our family. So the method of breeding we do is called pen breeding. What we do is we pen the breeding pairs up together for two months. Um, one of the reasons is just to make sure that the does are allowed to go into two different heat cycles in case they didn't take on the first. And doing it this way ensures that the doe is going to get bred as well as allows the boys some time to spend with their ladies. So the main thing I'm going to be watching for is a doe's heat cycle. Now this is where pen breeding actually helps out because the buck is going to let you know that the doe is in heat before the doe is even willing to be mated. So he's going to be blubbering at her, he's going to be glued to her, um, and get very possessive over her, not even wanting the other does to be around her. And next you're going to start noticing that the doe is interested in the buck. She's going to be standing there for him, rubbing her head into his beard, getting all that nasty pee smell on her, um, and then just wagging her tail. So she's going to be standing there, which is called the standing heat, um, and again, willing to allow this buck to breed her. So when she wags her tail, that's actually called flagging, and what she's doing is just whiffing her heat scent around. So you'll see a lot of that going on, and just all around a lot more vocal. So again, these are the things that we're going to be looking for. A doe cannot get um, bred, she won't get pregnant, unless she's in heat. So that's the main thing you're going to keep an eye out for. So you don't always actually see the deed being done. So another thing I look for is what I call muck butt. It is just what it sounds like. Um, it's, it's the deed on the back end. So the buck's sperm is on the back end. Now if you catch it early enough, like right after it happened, it's going to be a lot more obvious than say it's been two hours. Um, so if it if it isn't as obvious, another thing you'll be looking for is just crustiness on the back of their uh, tail, because as they wag and stuff, it'll get that those hairs real crusty. So that's obvious sign too. So sometimes it's not as obvious. Now you all saw when we first put Vader in this pen here with Maybelline and Dreamer, he went right after uh, Maybelline. He was just running around like crazy. Now she may have been in heat. He might have been acting that way towards her because she was letting off her heat scent. Or it just happened to be the first time that he was in with the lady and was just super excited. Um, and the bucks do act pretty crazy the very first time you put them in um, and they're just kind of running them around so I did write that date on the calendar uh, but I never saw any evidence of muck butt or the fact that he even bred her and then today <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be a new date on the calendar because a little bit ago we did see her kind of standing for him he's got his face in her butt a lot and I don't know if she's got muck butt just came up on her but but we'll check for that. So anyway, I'm going to put a new date on the calendar for Pretty Miss Maybelline. Now Dreamer for sure was um, bred a couple days ago because she had muck butt. She was standing and actually wagging her tail for, for Legend and he, or I'm sorry, for Vader. And he was just glued to her. So she was bred a couple days ago. So up here in Legends Pen, I have to say, he is not the aggressive buck I, I pictured him being. Um, so when we first put him in here with the ladies, he sniffed Val's back end a little bit, but there was really no interest there as far as him going to get blubbery and acting real bucky on her. Um, and it was just pretty much calm and chill in this pen, except for a couple days ago, uh, Becky. And I had to see it from afar because these girls make it so hard on me. They won't let me see their back ends and they just kind of curl back into their little structure um, backwards, of course, and hide there if I come around. So from afar, he was all over Becky as far as blubbering at her. She was standing for him, wagging her tail. Um, so haven't seen any muck butt because they won't let me see. But I did see that behavior, so I definitely wrote Becky down on the calendar. Now, still nothing. So in Everest Pen, 
on day one, he was hot on uh, Lily's tail. He was acting like she was letting off a heat scent. Um, and Vader was kind of sniffing at her a little bit too on the other side of the fence. Um, so I marked that date down for her. However, this morning um, was the first sign of actual muck butt. The deed had just been done shortly before I noticed it. Um, and, and it was very obvious. So I'm going to go with today's date instead of the first. But other than that, like no action out of these ladies in here really. Um, none are showing that they're in heat. Um, and he's definitely not showing that they're in heat either. As you can tell, he's really interested with Lucky's ladies. Um, bringing us into the next thing, he is absolutely psychotic this year. I have no idea what has gotten into him. Uh, he's not the gentleman he used to be, not even a little. So he's just gone crazy, kind of a little mad. And this morning, he had actually busted out of his fence. It was the one spot um, that wasn't wired really good. We just, I guess, didn't assume it needed to be because it had the clasps on it um, to close it. But anyway, he did bust out and then we found him fighting over here with Lucky um, until their heads were good and bloodied. Uh, messed up the fence a little bit, but just absolutely crazy. And then the does, of course, just took the opportunity to go up on the top of the hill and, and browse. So. Had to get them back in, went around and just secured everything really well. Um, and he's just, again, absolutely crazy Everest. I don't even know who this goat is anymore. So because of that happening, this is actually a perfect example as to why we do not pen our older bucks up along the same um, fence. For one, they'd just be battering each other all day. Um, wouldn't be good at all. But also, as he broke out of his fence, um, he had, would have had to break into Lucky's again. So if they weren't separated, then he would have broke out of his fence and right into Lucky's ladies and kind of all for naught. We wouldn't know who was bred to who at that point. Um, so that's another good reason to keep them separated. So over here in Lucky's pen, um, if you guys saw, Lucky gave a really, really good example of how they just go crazy when you first put them in with the does being separated for so long. Um, and he went straight after Elsa, and it was Elsa he was extremely interested in, so I wrote that date down. But um, yesterday and today, she has been in a heavy heat, and it's very, very obvious. Um, he's glued to her, seen the deed done, she's got muck butt, as well as Everest going crazy over there because he can smell her too. So she's got a new due date. Um, as far as Sky, no action out of her. Um, she's rubbed up on him a little bit, just being friendly, but definitely hasn't shown any signs of being in a, in a heavy heat or anything. And then the two crazies that are in here, we have Ruby and Woe Nelly. Uh, they make it really hard, just like just like Val and Becky. They don't want me to see their back end. They're just they're facing me at all times. So me trying to get around, it's really hard. So I was able to sneak up behind here and get a good look at um, Woe Nelly and Ruby's back ends. Nothing on Ruby, but Woe Nelly definitely had muck butt. So Woe Nelly is on the calendar. So here in Merle's pen, uh, these guys have actually been pretty funny to watch. Now, nobody's really taken advantage of the A-frame as much as I thought as far as it being a play area for them, but Shilly, from very get-go, she loves it up in the middle there, um, but she's actually all over it. She'll go up and down and stuff, but she's the only one. And Merle I have caught a couple times sleeping right there where Shilly was just relaxing. So as far as who's been bred in here, um, on breeding day, he was very hot on uh, Lodi's trail, but it wasn't until the day after where it was like, okay, she's obviously in a, in a big time heat. Um, He's a little bit different of a breeder. He's, he's pretty aggressive and the girls just really don't like it, but he makes it extremely obvious when they are in a, in a heavy heat. Um, so Lodi was bred um, day two of breeding, so she is, as well as um, Tansy as of yesterday. So he was all over Tansy hot on her trail and she got bred a couple times yesterday. So we've got two more goats for the calendar up here, Lodi and Tansy. And the three that we're waiting on still is going to be Shilly, Don, and Nova. So over here in Champ's pen, um, he's kind of my special breeder. He only will breed the does at night. He will not let you see it happen. Uh, he's very, very secretive about it. It's very annoying, but that's how he goes. So, um, so I didn't see any action out of this pen except for a little bit of him sniffing little bits butt on day one. Um, so 
Nothing happened for quite a few days, and then one morning I woke up and noticed that Cammy, Abilene, and Little Bit all had muck butt on the same day, and Roxy was the only one that wouldn't let me get behind her to take a look. So later that day, I noticed from afar that Roxy was actually all over Champ. So she was rubbing on him, she was wagging her tail, and he was just like, girl, you have to wait till this evening. So. Uh, but she was definitely, definitely in a heavy heat. So I got all four of these girls on the same due date on the calendar. So for the next couple of months, that is the signs I'm going to be continually watching for. Um, I'm going to mark every, any sign of a heat cycle or them being bred. I'm going to mark on the calendar. And then from that day, 19 to 21 days after, if they don't go back into heat or show any signs, then I'll know that was the date that they actually conceived. Um, and then 145 days after that date is what their due dates will be. So it's going to be a busy couple of months for me. I'm going to have to be watching a lot of butts, but um, getting excited. We got quite a few names on the calendar already for some due dates, guys. Okay, so now that breeding is underway and they're all penned up doing their thing, we still have more projects that we actually have to tackle. Um, the next one is going to be the pig pen, and it has a lot to do with this area behind me here that's kind of a mess. So it's going to be a big project, but this is where we want our pigs to end up. Um, we did have them in the backyard, mainly because we didn't have a pen for them just yet, and that's a nice shady spot. Um, it's close to the house, whatever. We wanted to just make sure we got to know the pigs and see how they act since we've never had Cooney Coonies before. Um, but either way, this is gonna be the area that we're gonna house the pigs, and we still have to build um, shade and everything else. We gotta get rid of this big old compost pile. Um, a lot of things have to be done right here before we can start building the pig pen. So these little Cooney Coonies are coming up on nine months. Um, as far as breeding is concerned, the girls can be ready to breed around nine months, um, and the males, the boars, typically won't be even interested until about a year, but can start around 10 months. So it's a perfect time to start thinking about the new pen, potentially separating them. Um, you know, we gotta consider when do we want to breed them and so forth. So. And they are, their gestation period is uh, three months, three weeks, and three days. So getting kind of excited. It doesn't seem like we've really had them that long, um, but we have. So they are coming up on breeding age. They are just a super, super cool, cool animal, really. We really enjoyed having them. These are our two male Cooney Coonies. Uh, this here's Teddy and this is Dobby. And yes, a lot of you asked. These actually we purchased from Weedem and Reap. And then this little girl here is Miss Peggy. And then her big old sister, who's like way bigger than everybody else, um, is Miss Piggy. So she definitely has the personality of Miss Piggy. She's got, she's a bit of a spitfire. She's really, really funny. So Piggy Piggies actually use a lot of water, especially here where it's hot. Um, and of course they need the water because they don't sweat. So they need something to, to waller in, if you will to keep them cool. So because they use so much water, um, I kind of personally would like a couple of fruit trees over by their pen. That way we are watering something rather than just that water going to waste. Um, Derek's thinking more along the, along the ends of just a big shade, big shade trees. So we'll have to see what we get over there, but definitely gonna do something so that we can use the water for something else. All right, let's go see what the kids are doing. Going. Good. Good. What you planting? Garlic. Almost done though. <clears throat> this is the top part. Some of them already um, sprouted. And in the bottom part, it's kind of obvious that there's a root that got cut. So. Neat. Think we'll have enough garlic next year? Hopefully. Maybe, garlic. you know, probably. Is that all of them? Yeah, that's all, that's all. Now you're gonna bury it? Yep. Go for it. Go for it. Oi, oi, oi. So much fun.
Karen's dad must be a cement finisher. <laughs> Good job. We also got a whole bucket of yellow onions. Big ones. Nice. Medium ones. <laughs> and as always, small ones. Or tiny. So those of you that have been following us have known we have been struggling with the garden this year. It has been horrendously hot. Um, just twice a day waterings and everything else. Way more days in the hundreds or over than anybody should have to deal with. Um, and the garden, it's definitely been the worst year we've had for our garden. Our gardens are usually very prolific. Um, just lots of things to harvest, more food than we know what to do with. Uh, so it's been really kind of just like a rough year for our garden. Uh, we are finally getting some green beans, not a lot, um, but we are starting to get some. The little cherry tomatoes here, there's a lot of green ones. If we're lucky enough to get them, you know, we have to get them when they're like orange because the birds are eating them um, and just, you know, it's getting watered. So the birds are coming, the snakes are coming and everything is just trying to eat the garden before we do. But either way, we're still, we're still holding on to it. Um, again, still getting a little bit of beans now and we're getting some tomatoes, um, we're getting carrots, but we do have a lot of stuff that we need to get planted um, for the fall garden so that hopefully our fall garden does better, which we, we typically have pretty good success with our fall garden. Um, so, you know, the garlics, the greens, the lettuce, the kale, the, the chard, uh, things like that, the carrots, you know, hopefully cabbage, maybe some peas. Uh, so we're gonna get on that and just get some more stuff in the ground and cross our fingers it does better than our summer garden did. So the only thing we have been extremely successful in this year um, is, is our potato harvest. So we planted this whole huge bed once um, and we got 80 pounds of really, really awesome potatoes that we're still eating on. We're almost to the end of them, uh, but perfect timing because the potatoes in here that we replanted are about ready to be harvested. Um, so we'll see and hopefully they'll keep a little bit longer than, than the ones we did harvest and, and kind of had throughout the summer. But either way, really, really, really successful potato harvest for the year. So we covered this potato bed with straw to keep in moisture um, just because it's been so hot. And because of it, now we have a bunch of wheat that the pigs and chickens are going to love. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be putting in our fall crops. So yes, we're in Arizona. We're in theory lucky enough to be able to, you know, plant almost for the whole year. So for the fall garden, we got broccoli. We're going to put in some carrots, just some lettuce. This one here is, I don't know. It's just lettuce. It's colorful. It says we got some radishes, which I love. Um, here's some more lettuce, not as colorful, it's green. And we got some spinach, which does really, really good here in the fall, and I love spinach. Um, and then this is some kale. So this is like a mixture of kale. So that is what we're gonna work with first. All right, I'm gonna leave the planting up to Derek and the kids, but I got something I wanna show you guys. All right, guys, so it is Finally to the point where we got them all breeding and everything. I have a freezer, a uh, freezer full of frozen milk um, and I have been just experimenting. So those of you who have been following, you know that I've been trying to come up with a variation of soap that I could sell. Um, and I am very, very, very happy to say I finally found what I feel is the perfect goat milk soap. Um, now, in the beginning of all of this, we, we didn't have any molds or anything and we just started playing with it. Um, I, my first soap was heavy in shea butter. This one um, is that same recipe, all of the other ones are gone, but this one we added basil to and also really was, was really cool actually because it had like an exfoliant. Um, really, really liked this one. The only thing I didn't like too much was it was more of just a real creamy lather rather than, it just didn't soap up or suds up like I would have liked it to. Still a really wonderful uh, recipe. Um, made a few of those um, and this here is the only one I have left and I made it eight months ago but this was from our uh, tallow from a grass-fed goat and we got the tallow out of it so this soap I do intend to to sell as well when we have tallow on hand um, but really really love this soap it's very conditioning um, and has a really super great lather as well 
and it holds up really good. Lasts a long time too. Um, and then I made this soap. This one was really, really high in castor oil, um, 20% to be exact, where in a lot of recipes they'll stick close to five or below. Um, they said it could be tacky or make it tacky. I didn't experience any tackiness with this soap. Um, it, it's really, really, really conditioning on the skin. It's really good for the face, um, but not much of a lather at all. It's just a real, real creamy kind of a soap. Not a lot of bubbles made from this one. Um, and this one, it got the soap ash on it. I'm not sure why, but either way, it doesn't hurt the quality of the soap. It's just not as appealing to the eye. This bad boy. This is the recipe I am going to use. I love it, love it, love it. It's extremely conditioning, feels amazing on the skin, and it has a beautiful, beautiful lather. So this is going to be the recipe I use for the soap that we make. Now I've been very fortunate that uh, my family has allowed me to make them my guinea pigs for all of the soap. And I've just had really, really, really great uh, feedback from all of them. They all really like this one the best. Um, but uh, just real good feedback and as a matter of fact my grandpa even he has tried every soap you could possibly buy at the store and his skin just gets so so itchy so he just got to the point where he quit even using soap because it was so horrible on his skin and he was miserable so anyway um, being him as a guinea pig was was really cool because now he's using soap again and he loves it and it doesn't affect him at all so he's not itchy anymore um, so that was really cool really neat to hear so and it's kind of like one of those soaps that you get really addicted to you don't want to put any of that crappy soap you buy from the store uh, on your skin uh, my mom including she's like i'm out of soap i'm out of soap so uh, again really really good feedback with all of the soaps but this one here this is the keeper. So I am just getting really excited. Um, Got to start banging out some, some soap so that I can start selling. And there's still a lot to figure out in that area as well. But uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. So finally, all of you that have been watching my journey and my soap making, I come up with the perfect soap. Pretty excited. Garden's all planted. Can we go now? Please. I guess so. <laughs> So since all the milkers are dried up and now everybody's pinned up and breeding, we can get back to having some fun. And we found a new spot. If you can see that, if you can hear that, that's water down there. But it's like a 200 foot drop, so we gotta find a way down there. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, we're down. Yeah. Thunder. It's probably not 200 feet. It's probably about 100 feet. Yeah, that doesn't look But we made it. All right, guys, the river is this way. Is it cold? been a long hot summer we we're trying to think about somewhere to go and it's already you know it's october here in arizona so like up on the mountains the lows are getting down into the you know mid low 40s and uh mid 30s where it's almost too cold and kids want to go somewhere water and there's water up in the pines up on the mountains but it's cold and, um this was my uh my best guess somewhere where there might be water in a state that hasn't had any rain to speak of I'm excited. I think I found a new spot. Got me. Ah. <laughs> ah. That's good. That's funny. Oh, that's good. You like this place? It's just the best place, you know. Yeah. With water. It has water. Uh huh. It's not a hundred degrees down here either, is it? No. It's actually cold. Way lower. Cold. A little cold. You well, I just got all the water. She's born in Tucson. She doesn't know cold. Yeah, that's true. That's very true.
Which one's yours, Emily? Big ears. This bigger guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys aren't very excited to see us, are you? Tell your folks I says hi. She hasn't washed her hands, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Woo! 